This is the mysterious city of Nanmadal, which is made of big stones. Off the coast of Ponpai Island in the western Pacific Ocean, the Emerald Sea is home to the dark, huge basalt pillars of the ancient islands that were made there. Its ruins, a complicated maze of huge stones and waterways, tell stories of a long-gone civilization that has been lost to the tides of time. This architectural masterpiece is hard to understand. How did these stone blocks, some of which weigh as much as 50 tons and were brought here by the ocean waves and coral reefs? Local folklore says that spirits live in Nan Madal, and there are many stories about sorcerers and flying dragons. This strange city was once the center of the Sodula dynasty's religious and political life. Now it is empty, and no one knows what happened to the people who lived there. Who built this amazing island? And what do its ruins reveal? A very big mystery. Nan Madal's construction is hard to understand. It is 1.5 kilometers long and half a kilometer wide, and is made up of nearly 100 man-made islands on top of a coral reef. It is close to the mangrove-covered coast of Ponpai. It is close to the mangrove-covered coast. This stone and sea city was built with boulders of basalt and coral that weigh an average of five tons, and as much as fifty. The rocks had to be taken from quarries that were more than twenty-five miles away, and then moved across a lagoon. Scientists and historians are still trying to figure out how a society that didn't have pulleys or metal tools moved, lifted, and put these stones in place. The people who live in Ponpai think that magical forces made the stones fly to their resting places. Some stories say that giants built the city in just one night. The Sodala dynasty which started in the 6th century and worshipped the sea, built this complicated urban maze. Most of it was built between the 13th and 17th centuries. The islands and the buildings on them were made out of huge columns of black lava rock that were up to 20 feet long and naturally shaped like pentagons or hexagons. These monoliths were set up like log cabins, and they were both the outside walls and the foundations, and then filled with chunks of coral, to make platforms for traditional thatch building. Over 400 years, an average of 1850, tons of black rock were moved for a total of about 750 zero metric tons. All of this had been done when there were about 25,000 people living in Ponpai. The layout of the city shows how well it was planned. The islets are set up in a grid, and tidal canals separate them. Each island was used for something specific. Some were homes, while others were used for making food, building canoes, or performing rituals. Or performing rituals. At its peak, people thought that up to a thousand people lived on the island. The central sector is a sacred area in the middle of the city. It has tombs, temples, and places for ceremonies. The royal mortuary at Nandoas stands out as the building with the most details. It is surrounded by two sets of eight-meter-high walls, and the corners are rounded in a beautiful way. The area inside is bigger than a football field. One of its cornerstones is thought to be fifty tons heavy, which is a lot. Before their final burial, the bodies of kings were kept in this mysterious building. The Sordalor Dynasty, the small island of Ponpai, which is now part of the Federated States of Micronesia, was run by a single central authority for hundreds of years, the Sodler dynasty. From about the year 1100 to about 1628, this dynasty was in charge. Pompeian legend says that the Sodler rulers were from another country and looked very different from the local people. Over many generations, the Sodler dynasty brought together a fascinating mix of people. For example, Ainin Mui was a wise leader who was credited with making Ponpai's upper-class stable, but not every ruler was remembered in a good way. Sakon Mi was known for his high taxes, which caused a lot of trouble for the people. The Sodala, known as Rai Puenleg, 
is still the subject of a darker story. According to the story, he used magic to find and eat the fattest Tumbians. During the reign of the Sardalur, Ponpai was split into three states, and each state was further split into several areas. The ruler's seat of power was at Nan Madol, where they created a title system based on different levels and jobs. The name Sardalur comes from the Pompeian word Sao, which means entitled to, and the old name of the island, Alur. This was a good name for the leaders of a society with a clear order of power. The city was the center of both politics and religion. The northeastern area was called Madol Po and was used as a cemetery. It had fifty-eight islets with priestly homes and high-walled tombs, including the Grand Royal Mortuary. The Sardalur chiefs used the city strategically by putting possible rivals inside it so they could keep an eye on and can control them. Food and clean water could only be found on the main island, so they had to be brought by boat to Nan Madol. The Sodella had complete power, and their rule became more and more oppressive over time. The Sodella ruler owned the whole island, including the people who lived there. The land was rented out by the ruler to the landlord classes, who made sure that the common people worked it. In exchange, the common people had to give the ruler regular tributes of fruit, fish, and other foods. Over time, the demands got worse and worse, until the people were starving and forced to work. With the invasion of Issachar Legal, the Sodolar dynasty came to an end. Issachar Legal, a semi-mythical foreigner who was upset by Sodala's harsh rule and the Lord's disrespect for the local gods took over Pompeii and replaced the centralized Sordala rule with the Nan Morki system, which is still in place today. The modern legend of a myth, Olysipa and Olysipa, who were twin sorcerers, are said to have built the city in a Pompeian myth. These sorcerers from the mythical land of western Cato were looking for a place to build an altar to the god of agriculture, Nason Onsap. After several failed attempts, they finally got it right, giving birth to Nan Madol. The story says that the huge rocks that make up Nan Madol were held in the air by a flying dragon. Olysipa took over, as the first sordular after Olysipa died. He was the father of twelve generations of rulers. The island has a reputation for being haunted, so the people who live there call it the Ghost City. It has such a creepy feeling that H.P. Lovecraft used it as the setting for Cthulhu's home in one of his short stories. Strange things have happened to people who have tried to study the island, which has led many people to believe it is cursed. In the 19th century, the ruler of the area warned an English archaeologist that he would be breaking the law if he did anything to the holy ground that had once belonged to rulers with supernatural powers. Years before, in 1874, a storm near the Marshall Islands sank a ship carrying hundreds of crates of artifacts from Nan Madol that had been collected by the Polish anthropologist Jan Kubari. The curse is also linked to stories about giants who used to live in Nan Madol. People say that a German governor of Pompeii ignored warnings and opened the sealed tombs of the ancient island rulers. This happened in the early 1900s. It was said that he found two to three meter tall skeletons inside. After the discovery, there was a terrible storm and the German ruler got sick. He died the next morning. Some people think that giants from the lost continent of Mu or the lost islands of Lemuria built Nan Madol based on these stories. People say that during the Japanese occupation of Nan Madol, during World War II, Platinum coffins were found in the water near the island. In these stories, Japanese divers find watertight platinum coffins full of valuable metals and pearls that are worth a lot of money. Divers are said to have brought pieces of platinum to the surface every day until two of them didn't come back up one day. Fall and history. Even though Nanmadol was beautiful, life 
there was hot. The unique way the city was built gave it security and prestige, but there was no fresh water or food on the islands because of it. The people who lived there depended on their subjects to bring these essential items from the mainland. When the Sodala were in charge, the chiefs got supplies at certain islets. When the Sodala lost power, this system broke down. Around 1628, when Isa Kalakal got rid of the Sodalas and started the Nan Morki era, Nan Madol started to fall apart. Even though the Nan Morkis used to live at Nan Madol, it was hard for them to get their own food and water. Over time, the system became less and less workable, and people moved to the main island. As the number of people in Nan Madol dropped, the city stopped being used and was eventually left empty. Even though we don't know exactly when the city went downhill, we do know that it happened slowly and over time. The city of Canals, which was once full of nobles, priests, and commoners going about their daily lives, slowly fell to time and nature. Nan Madol and the area around it make up a large archaeological district that covers more than 18 square kilometers. The stone buildings built on the coral reef flat are part of this district. And the coast of Pompeii's main island, which is close by, Nan Madol, was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2016 because its megalithic architecture is so impressive and big. It was also seen as a reflection of how traditional chiefly institutions and systems of government in the Pacific Islands came to be and are still used today. However, the site's safety is in danger right now. The overgrowth of plants, the damage from storm surges, and the fact that some of the stonework has fallen down are all very worrying about the state of the stone structure. Nanmadol has been on the list of World Heritage Sites in Danger since 2016. There are plans in place to protect and manage it, with the Nanwaki chief in charge. Traditional owners are involved in these plans. Are you ready to find out what the past has kept hidden? Leave a comment if there are any mysteries from the past that you'd like us to look into in future videos. Thanks for watching.